I'll turn the lights on for you. Welcome. Here we are. Too bad it's not sound. I'm gonna get out of the fuck away, man. <laughs> get in here. You gotta tell us about this. They, you can't hear me. Yeah. Well, come and tell me about it so I'll know. Come up here and tell me. Oh, okay. Uh, All right, wait a minute. We're gonna talk about this light first. Uh, wait a minute. Listen to me. Can I hear the music too? I love it. Yeah. Here we have a light fix. Oh, fuck. Man, I'm getting ready to crank it out. Well, don't keep saying those words. Okay. okay. Tell me, see when to start. This is wedding dishes for my big mistake wedding. All right, what about these over here on the wall? What? What are those? Uh, these are Balinese spirit masks. We have um, life, birth, and death. From uh, Bali. Here we have a, a uh, rhinoceros suede tapestry done in Tanzania. And what are those strips made of? Those are suede. Yeah, that works. When uh, there was a uh, there was a, a famine in Tanzania in 1979, and I went with a uh, a group of uh, non-denominational uh, volunteers to help in famine relief for a month. So while I was over there, I, I got a lot of uh, local handicraft. Probably traded them apples. Minnesota by the name of Carol McCready. She feels like she got her inspiration from a guardian angel, and that's what started her on doing her angel prints on papyrus. She's one of the only ladies in the country that uh, produces her own paper for papyrus and then does laser prints of her originals. Seahawk. The discoloration on the bill is the way a Seahawk naturally looks. All right, about this one. This is the Medieval Four Seasons done by Carol McCready. Another one her, of her reproductions done by laser printing. But it's the reproduction of the medieval seasons, fall, winter, summer, and spring. And this other angel over here. This is the archangel Gabriel. One, what he said in the Bible was when he came to earth, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. This is Carol's Byzantine pre-Renaissance interpretation of the archangel Gabriel. And your ship? The ship was... Uh, uh, in a, in, a, in a Philadelphia Venetian importer's shop at the turn of the century, and it's copper. It's a copy of the 14th century Venetian trading ship. If you notice the top, the line of St. Mark's, the, uh, the national flag of Venice. Somewhere? Uh, the base I found at a junk shop in New York on 40, off of 42nd Street, and the top portion was in an antique shop in Birmingham.
they'd been uh, separated for over 60 years, and I found them and put them back together again. I mean, that's the base that's supposed to go on it? That's the base that's supposed to go on it. That was the base that went with it. It was in the initial shop in Philadelphia at the turn of the century. What's the chances of, of finding that? Who the hell knows, man? I don't I, know. I, 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 and the only reason I knew this was the base was because he had a photograph of this in the window in the shop in Philadelphia, the import shop, the Venetian import shop. That's the only way I knew. All right, let's get your stereo here. Yeah, good. Music, stereo, books, tapes, tapes, all the albums. Then we have some specimen cactus, and we also have some African baskets from my trip to Tanzania. And some specimen butterfly collections. And a brass candlestick when I went to the University of Madrid. The only thing I've got left from my little academic 14th, 15th century, 14th, 15th, and 16th century academic study of 14th century political, Spanish political science, literature, art. Who the hell cares about that shit? Can't buy a cup of coffee. Now these are painted by a gentleman in Key West who was uh, the 1938 paintings, the ship paintings. They were painted by a gentleman by the name of Mr. Barker. He was the editor of the 1938 World's Fair Handbook. He's written four books, The Log of a Lime Juicer. His father was the last, was the captain of the Tusa Taylor. It was the last free sailing ship to fly the American flag around the Cape Horn in 1932. He was the third male in the last voyage of the Tusa Taylor, which was owned by the president of U.S. Steel. In his later life, he, he painted 19th century boats and died three years ago. And the top one? These are, they're all certain specific 19th century boats. These were painted by Mr. Barker. Fine gentleman painted his rent on time. Right in the house. His word was his body. And then these are two representations of my work. These two classic nudes. They were two sisters from Stockholm. They were both 119, 120, and they were both blind. Helga and Ganilla. I did these for limited editions. I did uh, 15 each of each one of them. And I, I had 10 more for different women. But these were the twins. I, I kept these. these the what did you make those out of? They're, they're cast cement. It's a cement material. And these are French Limoges dessert glasses that came from a butterfly plate collection in 1922. So French Limoges. And then the stained glass a copy. These are Spanish tiles done from a tile company in Madrid. Uh, these are Spanish, the blue are French, and the white is Italian. And I had a friend of mine copy the stained glass design from a copy of the Spanish tiles. The, the, the fireplace is a, is a, a I, I got the idea from a European, European ceramic stoves rather than doing a, a, I, do a I do a negative space into the wall on a New England chimney rather than a, but it's a, Europeans use a lot of ceramics and stoves and so forth. That's where I got that here. And of course, I don't know if you've gotten a picture of the chandelier. But you're looking at alcoves that I, I cut into the, into the walls to give the, the, the feeling of, like the ceiling goes on to the other room. But what you were dealing with is mirrors that deal with illusion. 
Illusion is the business of artists. Making now, something look real that's not. Now, tell me again this unbelievable story about this chandelier. Well, I was traveling up to Atlanta to see my cousin, and I got lost. And I was on these back, ro back roads somewhere. Well, you know, I, I was so frustrated. I, I was listening to that inner voice. I decided to stop along the road and pray. Well, I went out to the field to pray, and my foot caught one of the brass parts of the chandelier. And uh, I dug around. I thought, this is a, sh a light fixture. Well, I went, I went to the closest house. Asked the lady who owned the property, and she said she did. And I said, well, there's a chandelier out in the field. She said, there's three of them. And I said, well, where did they come from? She said, well, my parents had a house, and they tore it down. We, uh, we left them there. The bottom part of the chandelier was covered under the dirt. The whole part of the chandelier was in dirt, and weeds were going six feet tall. And I asked her if I could buy them, and she said, well, they don't work. So I, I, I said, well, how much will you sell them for? And she said, well, I'll sell all three of them for 15 bucks. And I said, well... I found one. How about I buy it for ten? And uh, if I find, uh, if, I mean, I buy it for fifteen. If I find the other two, I'll pay ten for it. And you just stopped off side road. I pray. just decided I need to stop and pray. Hell, you know, I never did pray. <laughs> but I bought it for story. And it's uh, well, nothing like finding light where you didn't expect it. All right, now, the, right there in front of you, the um, what? stained glass. The stained glass was made by a friend of mine with a little speakeasy window and copied the design on the Spanish top. You know, you never do know when you want to tell somebody to go away. <laughs> and I hope. And that little table there. These are little marble tables. Then we've also got the kind of ceiling in here, and then we've got a barrel of all the ceiling in here. Uh, then if, when we go in here, the Christ on the wall over there is a picture I did when I was at the University of Madrid in the Art Academy of Florence. And then these were done by a client of mine who no longer lives, but he was a set designer in New York and lived in Key West, and I took care of his orchids. But he was also an artist, and so uh, let's get the paintings first over here. Okay. These were done by, by an artist in Ribbon over here? Yeah. Oh, okay. You want? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Huh? What well, this top one here? They're both. These are called the ladies, ladies and Wayne that pearls. And just before he died, he did six paintings, uh, two in each set, and the other four were bought by a president of a corporation in New York, and I bought these two. And these were done just before he died of age. That was 85. Now let me ask you about this one over here. Now this is a painting that I did. I did this was one when I was in the Art Academy of Florence. One of my Christ, I call it my fellow's Christ. And this is one of my works, done in probably 1971. What about the, the china there? Well, the china was bought from a little old lady. I lived in an apartment building in <laughs> Birmingham. <laughs> I didn't know about the china. I knew about the candelabras. And I bought that. She was going to a nursing home, and I bought the, the china from her. It is pre-World War II Nartaki, and the design is called Penelope. They look like plates to me. <laughs> the uh, the Chinese tiles over right. here. Okay. All right. The Chinese tiles are done about 1845. These are probably some of the finest ceramic tiles I've got in the house. They were auctioned off in a screen at Park Bonet in New York. And because the screen was broken, it was sent back to Birmingham. And when I worked in a shop in Birmingham, I bought them. But they are like 1845, 1850. And they were just sent back to Birmingham because they weren't, they broke.
here in the kitchen. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome to the kitchen. Uh, I have European style open cabinets. You notice all the cuisine on all the blenders and food. I love to cook. Uh, tile floor. Don't 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 photograph the the where the doggy sleeps. But uh, the nicest thing I have in here are some Barclay Linux china, one two three four five place settings, uh, and a Christmas china, an English Worthington from English Perkins. This is one of my paintings also. You painted that? I painted that. It's uh, just uh, a still life. It was one of my mother's favorite paintings she had in her bedroom. How about the goblets up here? Is this a part of it? Or? No, no, those are just brass goblets. Yeah. Christmas China, Cumperson, made in England. And these are Gouda Swedish Crystal glasses. I just now noticed you didn't have any cabinet doors. That's the European style of open cabinetry. Yeah? Yep. And the white and red tile is a very French 1940s pattern. And I also have a whole set, I hope you get over here, of the Henkel knives. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pieces of it. We need to go to the rental room. The rental room. Yeah. Here we have a washer and dryer. Okay. All right. We have two interesting pieces here. These are Indian. They are prayer. Um, paintings, prayer etchings. This one was done in 1842 and this one was done in 1750. What they did was when they would go to the temple and pray they would take little drawings they had bought of things they wanted the gods to give them. This was a woman who wanted to become pregnant and this was a man who wanted to go on a journey and you see him on an elephant. This is the goddess of fertility. What, what is this down here? What is this? this is a glass Done, this is a glass work done by an artist from Kentucky. And this is one of my little renderings of two people making love from an abstract form. I guess so. Yes. 